Fight fans all over the world is Daddy P with Slap Pappy Gorilla. What? Daddy P back at you. Y'all already know Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. Hey man, I just watched the fight again. Y'all know they re-aired it on Showtime uh, because it was a Showtime event. So uh, I watched the fight again. It, it was very intriguing. But just watching Ryan Garcia has fallen to 23 and 1, 19 KOs. Now, I'd like to say thank you to all the subscribers. All of you all who are, have subscribed to the channel, hey, I appreciate all of your subscriptions. Hey, I will not disappoint you. All of you that have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time content comes available. Now listen, you can win $100 if you're a subscriber. Listen. We are doing the segment, I'm introducing it called Get This Money. You know, it's not gambling, you're not betting, you're not putting up money, but you can win money, A, by saying who you believe will win this fight, by watching the fight that's coming up on May the 20th between Devin Haney, Haney and Vasil Lomachenko. So, hey, you have to be a subscriber to win. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But right now, we go get into this video. Ryan Garcia, 23 and 1, 19 KOs. He lost to Tank Davis. Um, hey, I take my hat off to the young man. He dared to be great. You know, he fought one of his peers. He, he did what it took to make the fight happen. He had to go through some weight clauses, all of that, man. He even had to basically go against his own promotion company that didn't really believe in him, that, that, that you know, told him he wasn't ready, you know. But he fought for and lobbied for this fight, and he got in the ring with Tank Davis, one of the best to ever do it, and he lost. Now, the, how he lost, you know, via body shot, vicious body shot from Tank um, some people, you know, they saying he could have probably got up to beat the count and continued on, you know, and with this particular fraternity that he belongs to called boxers, these type of fighters, boxers, you know, they frown upon Quentin in the ring. So it came into question, you know, whether he could have recovered or not, you know, who knows that's between him and God or whatever, but Ryan Garcia in the seventh round took a knee from a vicious body shot and did not beat the count. That was the fight. Um, Y'all remember Keith Thurman, Thurman, Manny Pacquiao. Keith Thurman got caught with a flush shot, solar plex, body shot, excruciate. He spit out his mouthpiece and all. That was in the 10th round of that fight with Keith Thurman and Manny Pacquiao. Go back and watch that fight to see what happened. And uh, Keith Thurman, you know, he kept pushing, you know. Uh, he did dance around the ring and, you know, so that he didn't have to really engage much after that until that round was over. But he kept going, you know. Also, he caught a devastating body shot from Colazzo. But Keith Thurman went on to win the fight against Colazzo. Uh, but he lost that fight to Manny Pacquiao via split decision. Um, also, another, you know, just looking at some different types of uh, injuries that boxers sometimes quit from an uh, orbital bone sh um, fracture. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, he quit on the stool basically against Canelo Alvarez, you know, from that orbital bone, you know, getting fractured right there in the ring. Canelo Alvarez was putting it on him, you know, but he quit and he talked a lot of trash, you know, before he fought Canelo, he used to talk trash by other boxers quit, but the man quit on the stool. Also, Kell Brook versus Triple G. Y'all remember Kell Brook? He got one eye uh, fractured 
from Triple G, and the other eye he got fractured from Errol Spence. Both those fights he went down to a knee and did not come back to beat the count. Uh, he basically he stayed quit, you know. But there are fighters that have, you know, continued on even through excruciating pain. Y'all seen the same guy, Errol Spence, man. He busted your Danis Ugas up. I'm talking about, I mean, man, if you see that guy, I, man, look, <laughs> a lot of these guys' face ain't look nothing like this guy. Now, the doctor told the ref to stop the fight, but your Danis Ugas was pleading. He was pleading with the referee to let him continue to fight. He didn't want to stop fighting, man. He wanted to take the fight at least to the end, you know. Um, that's a guy who didn't quit, you know. He wanted to keep going, but he couldn't keep going um, because the doctors saw fit for him to stop the fight, you know, for the ref to stop the fight. So, I mean, I'm going to tell you, Got it versus Ward. Teddy Atlas brought this up in a uh, y'all know Teddy Atlas got a, a podcast, I guess it is, and it's also on YouTube. I was watching that, and uh, he brought up Gotti Ward. That was the first fight between Arturo Gotti and Ward. That first fight, man, Ward took a body shot so crucial he went down to one knee. Same type of shot, liver shot. He went down to one knee, but he did get up and continue to fight. He beat the count for the referee. He got up and he finished the fight. Um, but it is what it is. The young man, hey, he fought through the excruciating pain. And because I guess, you know, hey, his heart was in somewhere. His mindset was in a different place. You know what I'm saying? So he, he came back and finished the fight. Um, but also, Teddy Atlas brought up something, man, that was very inspiring, even to me. You know? And um, he kind of was talking about Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder the first fight. You know? When Tyson Fury got knocked down that last time, you know, Everybody thought he was out for the count, but he rose up, man. And I'm going to tell you, where would Tyson Fury be today if he did not get off that mat in that first fight? You know, and Tyson Fury came back from a lot, man. Tyson Fury, you know, he was a champion before, you know. But he had to get back up from some other things that life had brought him. You know, he had went through some little depression, drugs, alcohol. So when he had this opportunity with Deontay Wilder, he had already come back from something. But that first fight was an opportunity for him to change his career. And man, look, he got up off the mat. You know, the fight ended up in a draw. And it afforded him another opportunity to face Deontay Wilder. And look at him now, you know. And uh, he's made a lot of money in the sport. He's done some legendary things in the sport. So, man, there you go. Money and legacy. That's what a lot of these fighters, that's what they fighting for. Yeah, they fighting for money and also legacy. So, I mean, just a little lesson in getting back up, man. Just get back up and face. You don't know what could happen if you just get up, you know. And that could be for somebody in life right now. I hope, you know, this could be something inspiring for somebody that they might be going through something in their life, man. You can get up and, and you don't know what could happen. Sometimes you think you in a place that you can't come back from. But a lot of times, man, it's an opportunity for you to show yourself what you made of. But anyway... Um, I just a little, you know, a little quick. I don't know. I hope it's inspirational for somebody. But just a look at Ryan Garcia's fight, man. And I think that even from this loss, Ryan Garcia can get back up, man. He's still a star. 
And um, even though Oscar De La Hoya <laughs> did not come to the post-fight press conference, he did say some stuff that made some sense. I saw a fight night uh, interview. And it was the night of the fight. You could tell he was, you know how, you know, uh, a lot of the stars and the people that have to do with the production and promotion and all that, they be running around. And a lot of people asking them for interviews, especially somebody the caliber of Oscar De La Hoya. So one of the fight hype representatives had called him and was asking him some questions. And uh, he was saying, how, yeah, man, Ryan Garcia can come back from this. He's still a star. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, Tank Davis going to go on and and do some big things because of this fight and the success of it. But Ryan Garcia still has some options and he's still a star. So, you know, being that uh, he's with Oscar De La Hoya, Golden Boy Promotion, he is in the hands of somebody that can steer him in that right direction. I don't know what type of changes he's going to want to make. Um, it's clear that he needs to make some changes because whatever's happening, what's happening in, in, in his camp is not going to help him reach different levels in the sport, you know. Uh, he will plateau right where he at and that's it. But if he wants to go up levels in the sport, you know, he's going to have to make some changes. And it probably is going to have to start with a trainer. Joe Goosen made some very alarming statements building up to this fight. A lot of people, I ain't the first one to talk about it. I'm not going to claim it. Uh, I, a lot of um, platforms, YouTube platforms even, was talking about and highlighted the fact that Joe Goosen was saying things like, oh, you don't really train Ryan Garcia. You partner with him and all of this. Man, that guy needs somebody to listen to, you know? He needs somebody to help him get real discipline, you know? You can't just go willy-nilly off what you feel and what you want to do in the rain, man. That's not how I work in the sport of boxing. So uh, I, I think that, you know, he's going to really take a real hard look at what's going on in his camp. And he's probably going to make some changes. And that would really be wise, considering that 140 pounds, that's where he's basically uh, campaigning. So you got some wolves up there, man. I'm going to just say, it, say what it is. You have four different champions at 140. Y'all know Josh Taylor was the undisputed champion, but now you have four different champions. And Josh Taylor is one of them. Also, Regis Prograis, Matthias, and Pueyo. So, you got some wolves in that division. Now, just to kind of, you know, I, I don't know everything about boxing, but I'm a fan of the sport, and I learn as I go. And the thing that I've learned you know, is that whatever sanctioning body you are ranked in or that you have entered into and you have a ranking in that system, uh, you have an opportunity to move up in that ranking to fight for a championship. And the rank and the uh, sanctioning body that Ryan Garcia is ranked in at 140 is WBC and the IBL. He's ranked in both of those uh, sanctioned with both of those sanctioning bodies. So he has the opportunity to fight within those systems uh, to eventually um, challenge for the title. So, and I already told you, y'all already know who the uh, champions are. I already named them. But in the WBC, he is ranked number eight where Regis Prograis is the champion. Um, he has some options there. He's also ranked number 11 in the IBF, and that's where Matthias is the champion. Um, you got more, <laughs> you got some wolves in that ranking right there, though. And that's why I think they have uh, Ryan Garcia at number 11. But number eight, he's ranked number eight with the WBC. And there he might have some uh, options, you know, because he needs a fight that's going to build his confidence. 
and also a fight to show the public that hey i'm still here so um just a few names in that wbc ranking that will probably be some potential fights for ryan garcia uh, number nine jose pedraza so jose pedraza is ranked number nine in the 140 pound wbc ranking system um and sergey lipinets Sergey Sergey Lipinets is ranked number five with the WBC, and uh, also Steve Spark. Steve Spark is ranked number ten, but in that number ten ranking, uh, that so now you saying you these are guys that are in the top ten, and a couple of them have names like Jose Pedraza. You know, he's a name, a good name to have on the resume. Uh, Sergey Lippin, yes, he's a known guy that you could have on your resume, and he's still in the top 10. A lot of people don't know a lot about Steve Spark, but Steve Spark, I mean, that would be a good fight for him, but I think Steve Spark fight in May, so I don't know how that would work out, but that would probably still, that's next month, so that would probably still work out give ryan garcia an opportunity if steve spark win his fight you know he might want to kind of try to move in that direction to see um if they can make something happen you know after ryan garcia see where he is mentally and where he is you know as far as training you know and getting ready for you know to make a you know, come up with a good game plan to fight whatever fighter he comes back to fight. So, you know, and I think a big part of what Ryan Garcia needs to go through is mental reconstruction. The fight game is meant. This is a mental game. It's mental and spiritual. You know, it's not just physical. So, yeah, you got a left hook. Yeah, you fast and all of this, man. But still, mentally you have to go to a different place you know what i'm saying in order to go to the next level in the sport and this is what i'm saying for ryan garcia but anyway you know i was just kind of going over some things man my hat is off to ryan garcia hey man look whatever happened whether he quit whether he could have got up and beat the count or not Whatever the case may be, the young man still has options in the sport of boxing. He still is a star, and he can uh, reconstruct his career and, and and still go far and and even probably level up, you know. But it's up to him. It's up to the changes he's willing to make, the sacrifices that he's willing to make, and um, whatever team, like if he stay with Golden Boy, um, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, I'm sure, can can do some things for his career. He knows what to do. Um, but uh, this Daddy P with Slap Happy Gorilla, go ahead and slap that like button for me. Hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel if you want to win $100 next month. We get this money. But this is Daddy P and I'm signing off.